Sophistry is defined as the use of fallacious arguments, especially with the intention of deceiving. Sometimes knowingly, and more often unknowingly, people use sophist, logically fallacious statements when arguing in favor or defense of various propositions. Without a basic understanding of formal logic and the logical fallacies commonly used, it is very easy to be persuaded by sophist arguments. During debates regarding the topic of geocentric flat earth versus heliocentric globe earth cosmologies, a myriad of flat earth fallacies and sphere earth sophistry is often employed, and makes a good case study for students of formal logic. The equivocation fallacy is when a term with more than one meaning is used without specifying which definition is meant. For example, the word round can be used to mean both a circle or a sphere, and with reference to the shape of the earth, exactly which type of round is meant drastically changes the statement. A similar fallacy known as false equivalency often happens when globe earthers attempting to explain how water can curve around and stick to a spinning sphere, cite water droplets, meniscus, adhesion, or other phenomena which cannot be shown to occur in samples larger than a glass of water. If the claim is large bodies of standing water bending and showing convexity upon their surface, citing single water droplets or the meniscus in a glass of water as evidence of water curving is a fallacy of false equivalency. The black and white fallacy, otherwise known as a false dilemma, is when two opposing statements are presented as the only possible options when in fact there are more. For example, when globe earthers attempt to refute flat earth claims by demanding photos or videos showing the edge of the earth. Most flat earthers make no claims as to what may or may not exist beyond Antarctica because humanity has been prevented by treaty from independent exploration. We may be enclosed by a dome firmament, as claimed by the Bible and many ancient cultures. There may be other earth-like ponds beyond Antarctica, or the earth could potentially be infinite. But to assume earth is flat with an edge, or else it must be a spinning ball, is an example of a false dilemma, the black and white fallacy. Begging the question or circular reasoning, is a fallacy whereby an argument's premises assume the truth of the conclusion. For example, the proposition that for thousands of years people have known the earth to be spherical, therefore the earth is a sphere, is an instance of circular reasoning, since the conclusion was already presupposed in the premise. Thus begging the question is attempting to prove a proposition while simultaneously taking that proposition for granted. The definest fallacy is similar to circular reasoning in that it involves fallaciously adding the definition of one property in terms of another. For example, when flat earthers point out that buoyant force causes objects denser than the medium surrounding them to fall, and objects lighter than the medium surrounding them to rise, defenders of the theory of gravity will often commit the definest fallacy by claiming gravity as the cause for buoyant force. Even in vacuum chamber experiments, one cannot separate the supposed effects of Earth's gravity as a control, making it impossible to prove this alleged correlation, and making it a definest fallacy to claim gravity as the cause of buoyant force. The many questions fallacy, otherwise known as a loaded question, is when a complex question is formed that contains a controversial assumption. For example, crafty globe earthers will often ask something like, do flat earthers exist all around the globe? Since flat earthers don't believe the world is a globe, answering the question either way with yes or no would be admitting through implication that earth is actually a globe. Therefore, when presented with the fallacy of many questions, the best response is neither yes or no, but to address and negate the assumption by saying something like, Earth is not a globe, but flat earthers do exist all across the flat earth. The hasty generalization, also known as the faulty generalization fallacy, or argument from anecdote, occurs when arguing an inductive generalization based on insufficient evidence 
and rushing to a conclusion without considering all variables. Globe defenders often make the claim that nature prefers spheres, or gravity creates spheres, or spheres are nature's fundamental shape, then point to water drops, bubbles, apples, the sun, moon, or stars as proof. This is shown to be a hasty generalization, however, since the sun, moon, and stars only appear circular, not spherical, and a variety of nature's other fundamental shapes are not spherical. Apples may be more or less spherical, but what about pears, bananas, starfruit, peppers, and cucumbers? Nature seems to prefer variety, diversity, and creativity more than a single spherical shape. The slothful induction, or appeal to coincidence, is the opposite of the hasty generalization fallacy, in which an inductive argument is still rejected despite overwhelming evidence for inference. For example, every pendulum on Earth, including construction tower cranes and Museum Foucault's pendulums, all require a manual swing to start their motion. Yet, stubborn globe apologists often use appeal to coincidence and claim all consequent motion stems from the alleged spinning of the earth underneath the pendulum. In reality, if the world's cranes and pendulum's motion had anything to do with a globe constantly spinning beneath them, there would never be a stationary pendulum on earth. The no true Scotsman fallacy, or appeal to purity, is when one attempts to protect their original generalized statement from a legitimate falsifying counterexample by simply excluding it. Instead of abandoning the falsified universal generalization or providing evidence to disqualify the counterexample, someone employing appeal to purity will just claim the counterexample is not true, real, authentic, genuine, or pure. For example, I used to state that no legitimate flat earthers believe Earth to be constantly rising at 9.8 meters per second as the farcical Flat Earth Society website claims. That is, until a popular Scottish flat earther and his supporters came out of the cosmological closet as upward rising flat earthers. Now, to prevent myself from ironically committing the no true Scotsman fallacy, I cannot simply say that no genuine flat earthers believe this, but must modify to a less universal statement like very few flat earthers believe this. The proof by assertion fallacy, or proof by repeated assertion, is a rather childish and stubborn tactic employed by repeatedly restating a proposition regardless of any contradiction or refutation. For example, if a flat earther simply repeatedly states, it's flat bro, time and again, or a globe earther says over and over, we have photographs of the globe. These are instances of the proof by assertion fallacy. Such statements may have a persuasive peer pressure effect on the weak willed, but these arguments are illogical and fallacious. The appeal to stone fallacy is the opposite of proof by repeated assertion and works by dismissing an argument as untrue or absurd by simply reiterating that it is so without offering any other evidence. For example, when globe defenders claim flat earth is absurd and proven wrong centuries ago, or flat earthers claim the globe doesn't exist, but then refuse to offer any corroborating evidence, and simply reiterate their claim over and over, this is an instance of appeal to the stone. The ad hominem, otherwise known as attacking the person or poisoning the well, is a logical fallacy that occurs when someone tries to undermine their opponent's argument by ignoring the substance of it, and instead directing personal attacks at their opponent's character, motive, appearance, skills, or other factors irrelevant to the issue at hand. For example, when globe earthers call flat earthers derogatory names, insult our intelligence, take shots at our physical appearance, the sound of our voice, or other irrelevant factors, these may be persuasive, but fail to provide any valid logical reason against the argument at hand. The argument from authority fallacy, also known as appeal to authority, is when the perceived reliability of an expert's opinion is offered as the sole reason for accepting the truth of a related argument. Even trusted authority figures can be wrong, mistaken, omitting, or purposely obfuscating the truth, 
and they must prove their contentions just like everyone else. For example, when Globe defenders appeal to the genius of Einstein or the ingenuity of Newton, claiming Earth could not be flat because that would contradict the opinions of the smartest men in history, this is not a valid argument. The courtier's reply fallacy is an inverted form of the appeal to authority, where a person without authority disagreeing with an authority is automatically presumed incorrect, or when a respondent to criticism claims the critic lacks sufficient credentials, training, or knowledge to pose any criticism whatsoever. When Joe Rogan dismissed my entire Flat Earth argument on his podcast by simply stating, you're not a scientist, you're not wearing a lab coat, this is an example of the courtier's reply fallacy. The appeal to ridicule fallacy, also called appeal to mockery, is when an opponent's argument is presented as ridiculous or absurd and therefore not worthy of consideration. Appeals to ridicule often compare complex circumstances to laughably commonplace events for comedic effect and work by inspiring strong emotional reactions in the listener. When globe earthers make the humorous argument, Earth cannot be flat, because if it was, cats would have knocked everything off the edge by now. This is an example of appeal to mockery. Appeal to tradition, or appeal to common practice, is the fallacy of arguing that something is correct simply because it correlates with a present or past tradition. For example, when heliocentrists claim the globe is an established fact, or that we have known for thousands of years that Earth is a globe, these are sophist arguments. Without demonstrable evidence to validate, there is no reason to assume any long-established tradition, belief, or behavior was ever previously proven back when it was originally introduced. The opposite, known as appeal to novelty, is also fallacious, in which an idea is deemed superior simply because it is new. Appeal to popularity is a sophist argument used so often it has amassed many monikers, including appeal to common belief, appeal to the majority, appeal to the masses, argument from popularity, argument from consensus, mob appeal, the democratic fallacy, and the bandwagon fallacy. Put simply, it is arguing that something is true or good because the majority, or a consensus, deems it so. When people claim there is a scientific consensus on various cosmological matters, or say things like, everyone knows the Earth is round, these are examples of appeal to popularity. The homunculus fallacy, otherwise known as infinite regress, is when a concept is explained in terms of the concept itself recursively without properly defining the original concept. Both globe-earthers with claims of a Big Bang and flat-earthers with claims of a specific God often unknowingly commit this homunculus fallacy. When attempting to explain the origin of life, the universe, and everything, the paradox of an uncaused cause in the form of a Big Bang or God is often argued. Unfortunately, this form of reasoning commits the homunculus fallacy, ending in an infinite regress, because when one further inquires what caused the Big Bang or what created God, there is nothing to logically prevent the answer of a bigger bang, or a greater God, and so on and so forth. The inflation of conflict fallacy is another sophist argument often employed by both flat and globe earthers alike, claiming that if experts in a field of knowledge have conflicting ideas on certain points within that field, that no conclusion can be reached, or that the entire field of knowledge itself is illegitimate, is the fallacy of inflated conflict. Just because various flat or globe earth proponents have disagreements about specific facets of these cosmologies does not in any way mean factual conclusions cannot eventually be achieved, or that the entire subject is moot. The moving goalpost fallacy, otherwise known as raising the bar, is when evidence presented in response to a specific claim is dismissed by simply demanding further, often greater, evidence. In debates between flat and globe earthers, one side will often demand to see a single photograph, a single video, a single map, or other such piece of evidence, with the understanding that some concession will be made once the evidence is furnished. If no concession is made, and more, 
different, or greater evidence is demanded instead, this is a sophist tactic known as shifting the goalposts. The slippery slope fallacy occurs when someone argues that a relatively small first step will inevitably lead to a chain of related events culminating in some significant, negative, unintended consequence. In the context of flat versus globe earth debates, globe defenders will often employ a slippery slope with statements like, if the earth is flat, then that would mean all the world's pilots are in on it, all the world's scientists are lying, everyone who ever worked for NASA is lying, and so on and so forth. In this example, if the flat earthers are correct, it is far more likely that the majority are unknowingly deceived themselves, and not knowing deceivers. The fallacy of incomplete evidence, more commonly known as cherry-picking, is the act of pointing out individual cases or data that seem to support a particular conclusion while ignoring many other instances which contradict it. In the context of picking cherries, choosing only a couple of the best, healthiest, ripest fruits, and based on that, making a qualitative judgment about the entire tree, commits the fallacy of incomplete evidence. In cosmology, heliocentrists will often handpick a couple high-altitude videos showing a curving horizon, then hastily conclude that undeniable proof has been provided for a globular Earth. In reality, these videos are either filmed using a fisheye lens or complete CGI fabrications, and all high-altitude footage, shot from standard lenses, without manipulation, show a perfectly flat horizon, 360 degrees around, never curving the slightest. The straw man fallacy, or attacking the straw man, is when one refutes an argument different from the argument actually being discussed, without recognizing or acknowledging the distinction. The person setting up the straw man will usually misquote, oversimplify, or exaggerate their opponent's position, and then knock the straw man down by refuting their own false argument. In the context of cosmology, Globe earthers often argue that Earth cannot be flat because the sun overhead would light up the entire expanse and there could never be night. This is a straw man misrepresentation of the actual flat Earth model, however, so any conclusion reached only applies to the irrelevant straw man. In reality, the sun hovers close to the surface of Earth and shines down like a spotlight, always leaving part of the Earth illuminated and part in darkness. The existential fallacy is committed when a conclusion is claimed from a universal premise without showing that at least one member of the class exists. For example, the phrase, all unicorns have horns, commits the existential fallacy because it asserts a claim specifically about something that has not even been confirmed to exist generally. Similarly, believers in the theory of gravity claim gravity always causes planets to form into spherical shapes because gravity pulls equally from all sides. In this example, the existence of both gravity and spherical planets are simply assumed, with universal claims being made about both, but without a single member of either class actually existing. The feedback fallacy occurs when taking for granted and believing in the objectivity of an evaluation without verifying that the source is a truly objective, disinterested, unbiased party. This is similar to hearsay or appeal to authority, in that the subjectivity of a potential mistaken or lying individual is believed to be objective or factual. For example, when the testimony of astronauts is cited as proof of a globular Earth, this is an instance of the feedback fallacy, as they are most certainly interested, biased, under contractual non-disclosure agreements, and the vast majority of them blood oath-bound members of the ancient Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. Objective facts are empirical, observable, measurable, demonstrable, and not dependent on subjective hearsay from a select group of vested interests or biased individuals. The conjunction fallacy is a sophist argument which proposes that a conclusion simultaneously satisfying multiple conditions is more probable than a conclusion satisfying a single one of them. This fallacy is often employed by people attempting to squeeze both heliocentric globe 
and geocentric flat cosmologies into one convenient box. They will use phrases like locally level but globally curved, claim Earth is still a globe but many times larger so as to appear flat, or even go so far as to say that Earth is a simulation and that this somehow gives it the ability to be simultaneously both flat and globular. The middle ground fallacy, otherwise known as argument to moderation, is another very similar to the conjunction fallacy, whereby an argument is assumed correct because it concludes a compromise or middle ground between two extremes. Sometimes compromises or the middle ground between two sides are indeed logically valid and sound arguments, but not if their sole reasoning is appeasement. Claiming Earth is still a globe, but many times larger than we are told, is an instance of the middle ground fallacy. Having a globe hundreds or thousands of times larger than we are taught still does not change demonstrable empirical reality which clearly shows that water does not behave the way it would have to on a sphere. The red herring fallacy is when something misleads or misdirects from a relevant or important question. Examples of this could be thought terminating cliches like stop thinking so much or so what, or here we go again, or let's agree to disagree, which are known as bumper sticker logic, forms of loaded language, often passing as folk wisdom, intending to end the argument with a cliché rather than a conclusion. Another popular form this takes is the I'm entitled to my opinion fallacy, in which someone dismisses arguments against their position by asserting their inherent right to hold their own particular viewpoint. This is their right, of course, but irrelevant to the matter of whether their assertions are true or false. And finally, the fallacy fallacy is the assumption that when a particular argument for a certain conclusion is found to be fallacious, that the conclusion itself must therefore definitely be false. In reality, just because someone uses fallacious logic when arguing for a certain conclusion, whether that be a flat earth, a spherical earth, or otherwise, does not thereby mean the conclusion itself is wrong. It simply means the conclusion does not logically follow from the premises. With knowledge of the existence, definitions, examples, and counters for these fallacies, the persuasive power of such sophist arguments disappears and is replaced with valid, sound logic.